Greetings, and welcome to episode 29. In today's episode, we'll be discussing finding your true path, and everything that goes along with it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, finding your true path. What does that mean? Well, for starters, it doesn't mean, what am I going to do for a living for the rest of my life? No, that is not finding your true path. That's finding a career. And translation of career, job you're going to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> Make sure you love it because you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. You don't want to do something you hate for the rest of your life because then you'll hate your life. Because people are taught to believe that what they do for a living is who they are. Now, if you work in the arts and you are an artist, say an actor, actress, 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 I said that wrong. Let me start all over. If you're an actor, actress, an arter, I can't speak. If you are an actor, actress, an artist, in the sense that you work with pens, pencils, paints, ink, on canvas, paper, what have you, or you're a musician, you are still considered an artist. Now that, those trades, you then are what you do for a living. In my opinion, because these things come from the soul out. They are expressions. And then what we see, the, the part we get as consumers of this art, that is the outward expression of this person's soul, regardless of the art form. Now, let's say you're a teacher, archaeologist, what have you. If you're teaching, and this is coming from within, out and you're not just regurgitating something you've already learned then that I would call it a career and that goes along with everything but as I said before I'm not talking about your career path I'm talking about the direction you would like your life to go what would you like to accomplish other than make money uh, not necessarily even from a spiritual standpoint uh, the more mundane aspects who are you who would you like to date where would you like to live would you like to travel and not live in any particular place <clears throat> how do you find your path you just know you will feel it in your heart now finding the path is the easy part sticking to it is something entirely different because you're going to spend your whole life with everybody else around you knowing better than you how to live your life. <laughs> and that is a fact. I'm 40 years old. And up until about, I want to say, five or six years ago, everybody else knew exactly what I needed for my life. And let me tell you, my wife of 12 years doesn't even know what I need for my life. She only knows that the bills need to be paid and that we need to make sure the bills are paid. But she's the type of person that views what she does as for a living as who she is. And I keep trying to explain to her and anybody else that will listen, what you do for a living is how you pay for your life. That is not your life. I don't care how much time you spend. So there's 24 hours in a day. If you spend 20 hours at work and 4 hours at home, who you are at home is who you are, not what you do for a living. If you work at a gas station, that's how you pay for your life. That is not who you are. Because each individual is worth the same as the next individual. You should be the same person working at McDonald's as you are a famous actor, as you are 
ooh, excuse me, a janitor, as you are a scientist, whatever it is you're doing, that's how you pay your bills. Who you are at home, that's who you are. Now, if you are a scientist at home, then yeah, you're a scientist. But I don't believe anyone's going home and ringing people up out of their apartment or their house. I don't think they're going to go home and flip burgers for the people on, 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 on in their neighborhood. I don't think that's going to happen. That tells me that that's not who they are. You get off of work and you, you're a garbage man. You're not going to go around your neighborhood and collect everybody's garbage off work. It's just not going to happen. Just like if you're a truck driver, you're not going to come home for your four days of home time and go around and deliver everybody's stuff to them. <laughs> or haul people's stuff for them. I keep trying to, people don't understand when I say that. Your path is not your career. Your path is who you are and the things you want for your life. If you don't want anything for your life but your job, then that is who you are. You are your job. But it doesn't make my point invalid that you're not what you do for a living. It just enforces the fact that we're taught to believe we are what we do for a living. So if you don't want to be counted as worthless, you want to find a better job. <laughs> And if you are what you do for a living, why is it that the people that want to be artists, regardless of the medium, the media, whether it's being a musician, whether it's, uh, you know, working as an artist in the traditional sense, that is to say you create with pens, pencils, and paints, or pastels, or whatever, people that want to choose those paths most of the time everybody around them except for their closest friends tries to talk them out of it and sometimes their friends even try and talk them out of it well you're gonna want a career where you make money but that's not my path is what they're trying to say and what you're trying to say is but that's not gonna make you any money and then they turn around and become rich and wonder why they don't want to speak to you because you spent your whole you spent your whole time with them trying to t get them to not walk their path <coughs> I wonder how many parents don't get to talk to their kids anymore because they bashed their kids' dreams and then their kids made it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going to be perfectly honest. I, I'm super spiritual, but if you bash my dreams, if you spend my life bashing my dreams, and then I make it, I'm not going to want you around. I'm just, I'm not. Not even to say I told you so. And I think that is a, a huge reason why there's so many unhappy people. Because they had a plan for a path they were going to follow. And then the world just beat it out of them. Oh, you can't do that. You'll never succeed at that. Blah, 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 blah. Just negative, negative, negative. Now, those that stick through it, I'm not going to say they make it, but at least they stuck to their path. And they're not unhappy because they're not doing what they want to do. They're doing it because their measure of success wasn't sticking to the path. It was becoming famous at sticking to your path. Oh, I'm a famous actor. Oh, I'm a famous musician. I'm a famous artist. In my opinion, if you stuck to your path and you got to perform your art or apply the trade that you feel that you were here to apply you that success oh I, I'm an archaeologist I got my PhD in archaeology you're an archaeologist boom success anything beyond that is bonus I'm a musician I've played a dozen live shows we didn't make very much money but I played a dozen live shows boom success you're doing what you wanted to do Famous isn't success. Money isn't success. Success is the things you can't buy. You can't buy talent. You can't buy the, the, the strength and endurance it takes to ply through and make it to where you can play 12 shows. Or you sell some of your artwork. Or you get on that play that maybe isn't on Broadway, 
and maybe isn't going to rake in millions, but you made it. Success. Boom. If you want more, go get more. But anything beyond your initial success, that's just bonus. It's extra. You already made it. But it goes it, it, it goes a little bit deeper. Like I said, the mon the more mundane aspects. And it's I guess you can't can't even really call it mundane. I mean, when you're talking about either your spiritual path or your romantic path or or anything, it's not really mundane. It's just these things, these personal items, are actually the most important items we have in our lives. But they're relegated to the second, third, and fourth because we're taught that making money is the only thing you really need to know how to do. Not true. Because the people that only know how to make money are the most miserable people you'll ever meet. They don't have anything that money cannot buy. How can that foster happiness at all? So... When you know in the core of your being who you are and what you want, don't let anybody tell you you can't be that person or that person isn't good enough or why would you want to be like that? Why is that your business? How does it affect you in any way, shape, or form? Well, I'm not into that. Well, go the fuck away. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just because I'm deeply spiritual, don't think for a second I won't tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> this is my path. If you want to walk a particular way, go. If our paths separate because of that, go. I've got shit to do. Obviously, you've got your own shit to do. You're not going to drag me down your path because you're lonely or you don't like what I'm doing. Well, if you don't like what I'm doing, don't do it. I don't like chocolate ice cream. I had the strawberry. But leave my shit alone. <laughs> what did someone tell me today? <laughs> Fiddle fuck. <laughs> but there's so many unhappy people. Like, big in the news lately. And not the not the police shootings. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the uh, LBGT movement. Oh, you're gay! You're gay! You're gay! Oh, that's God said. God said. God said. God said. A man didn't even say anything about women. He said a man should not lie with a man the way he lies with a woman. To read that literally, that would tell me, don't put it in his pooper. It said nothing about them not being able to be in love, them not being able to be together. There's other things you can do than to have penetration. Well, that kind of penetration. I mean, let's let's face it. In those times, and even nowadays, these things can cause diseases. Let's face it. Feces comes out of that hole. And feces is nothing but it's poison. And, and it's all the toxins your body sheds. So, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but it didn't say anything about these people couldn't be in love. These people couldn't be together. Ne never said anything like that. But all of these people, religious and non-religious alike, are telling all these people that we get, the, we have the right to control your path. We have the right to take you off of your path and put you on our path. God said so. Whoa. What? <laughs> I don't think God said that. I mean, if you, if you want a rough translation of the Bible that says, hey, try not to be a dick. <laughs> That's all it says. Try not to be a dick. And on this day, eat fish. <laughs> it never said anything against homosexuality. It was against sodomy. 
a lot of the gay men I've talked to don't even perform the act. So where is your argument? Well, I'm uncomfortable with your path. Well, walk the fuck over there! <laughs> For the fuck. <laughs> You don't get to tell me my path isn't good enough. Stop watching me walk. It's that simple. I want to be a musician. Well, your path isn't good enough. Well, go the fuck over there. I've got things to do. I've got it in my heart. My marching orders were, de were delivered. And you bashing it, that's just going to make it just that much more difficult to get where I'm going. Finding your path would be so much easier if everybody would stick to their path. If you were really sticking to your path, you'd be having so much goddamn fun living your life, you wouldn't give two shakes to what I'm doing. You'd have to actually, hey, what you up to? Hey, I'm sleeping with men. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. I'm playing my guitar. <laughs> It'd be that simple. You'd be so concerned with making sure your path was correct that you wouldn't have time to correct mine. Oh no, you have to walk like me, with a little limp and slide your foot. <laughs> no thanks, I'll just keep walking normal, like I was doing, before you took notice. <laughs> but that's, uh, that, that too is just one aspect of the path. Uh, so, spiritual path, you've got your uh, emotional path, or you be whoever you want to date, whoever you want to be with for the rest of your life. And that's not saying, well, that's a choice. No. Being gay or straight may not be a choice, but who you choose to be with, that's the choice. Ha ha. And I'm not saying, well, you have to choose to be with a woman. No. I mean, you're a man, you're gay, in your pool that you're fishing from, you still have to make a choice. And that's what I mean. You're straight. You still have to make a choice. You're bisexual. You still have to make a choice. You're not choosing what gender you'd rather be with, but you're choosing who you want to be with. So when I said that these were mundane, that, that, that was wrong. And I apologize. That was very... What's the word I'm looking for? That was very irresponsible of me. Because these decisions are not mundane. These are some of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Jobs will come and go. But important people, they're very, very far and few between. So, remember, success, when it comes to your chosen vocation, or anything on your path, once you have achieved the thing you're after, that's success. Becoming famous at it, or like if it's a relationship, you won't know if you count your success the way you count your success at work. You won't know if you're successful until the relationship fails, or until you're burying your spouse. So, don't your success is the achievement I got their attention Le success level one <laughs> I got the first date success level two we've been dating for a month now success level three we decided to call ourselves an item quote unquote success full on success anything beyond that is bonus we were together our whole lives and we died in each other's arms that's just bonus. That's just bonus. You already achieved success 50 years before when you found each other. People put so much emphasis on the final outcome. You won't know the final outcome. Even if you're famous, you could become unfamous pretty damn quick. I've seen that happen. Would you still consider yourself successful? If you were successful and suddenly you weren't, suddenly you were unfamous, if famous is the goal, famous shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be the art you're performing, the trade you're performing, 
the theories you've amassed over the years, those are your successes. Becoming famous at it, that's your ego talking. And there's certain things you just can't add ego to, like, say, a relationship. Your interaction with other people, you add ego to that, and suddenly that's all it is. It's about feeding that ego. Your interactions with the people you meet becomes about your ego. Your interactions with your spouse becomes about your ego. Your ego. When interactions with other people should be about them. What can I do for you? Well, then, well, that wouldn't be fair. What if they don't? Well, then you're around the wrong people. You should attract to you the kind of people you want to be like. If you're in a room full of 100 people, and everybody's not acting like you, the odds that you're going to change everybody in that room to the way you live, regardless of if you're the one living right, this it's just regardless of that, you're probably not going to change everyone to your way. It is more likely that you will succumb to harmonic resonance and start turning to their way. It is more likely. It is also just as likely that you'll remove yourself from that situation rather than be changed. And then you'll keep looking until you find the room full of a hundred people that live along the same lines as you. Birds of a feather kind of thing. Or stupid people stick together. Either way, you get the same results. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But, yeah, not walking the path that's in your heart, whether it be your chosen vocation, whether it be who you choose to be with. It can destroy you slowly on the inside. And the, all the while... Well, I'm doing it to make so-and-so happy. I'm doing it to make so-and-so happy. How many people are in your life that you're trying to make happy, but you're making yourself miserable? And if these people only love you if you're doing what they want, then they don't love you. Love isn't something you have to pay for. Love is not a reward. Love is not a punishment. Love just is accept it or don't. You don't even need to accept it from another human being. Love is like an energy field. Like a zero point energy field, love has its own energy field. <coughs> it's already in this underlying tone to the whole frequency of our... At, at, I can't speak for the whole universe, but it's the underlying tone for our galaxy at least. So why would you possibly let someone treat it like a reward or a punishment when you can dip in and grab as much as you like whenever you like? You don't need a triggering mechanism to feel love. Decide to feel love and you'll feel love. You don't need, well, I want love from someone else. If you're not giving yourself love, why is anybody else going to give you love? If you come across looking codependent like that <laughs> you're just making yourself a victim you're you're telling people that I'll do anything for love oh really so I could just put it like a carrot on a stick and lead you around wherever you want to go or wherever I want you to go because if I take it away you'll panic and do whatever I want to get it back love is not a reward or punishment love just is So if you're dancing the dance, jumping through hoops to make other people happy, but you're not happy, you're in fact miserable, yeah, you're not walking your path, you're walking somebody else's path. And until you start walking your path, you are never going to be happy. I grew up under the hoods of a lot of my friends muscle cars I know a lot about cars but I wasn't a mechanic at the end of the day I wasn't a mechanic 
I know that at the end of the day, I'm an artist. I, I'm, I write. I write music. I play music. I sing. I know in my heart I'd be an excellent teacher. These are the things that I am. And that's just a small bit of the things that I can do. Oh, excuse me. So, when I'm walking my path and someone tells me, well, you got to walk your path like I'm walking my path. No, I don't. Well, you have to suffer like the rest of us. No, I don't. Hardship befalls us all. Suffering is optional. Suffering is optional. And I'll accept the hardship on my terms. Not yours. Not yours. Because your life has been, has trained you. Or should I say, you have trained your life to get the maximum amount of suffering. Why the hell would I want that? <laughs> And do you know why you've trained yourself to get the maximum amount of suffering? So you can justify every single one of your decisions that lead to gratifying yourself instantly. <laughs> the instant gratification. It's justification for instant gratification. There's very few people I've ever met that haven't trained their life to get the maximum level of suffering possible from the path they're walking. Very few people. Even my own wife has trained her life to get the maximum level of suffering. It does. It helps to justify your instant gratification. Well, I was suffering, yeah, but you were suffering needlessly, unnecessarily. <sighs> Stick to your path, and you have no reason to suffer. And stop the pretense of, well, life is suffering, I have to be suffering. No, no, you do not have to be suffering. Life is not suffering. Life is experiencing if all you're doing is experiencing suffering, you're doing something wrong. Because the one thing I learned when my friend was teaching me martial arts and how to do the nunchucks, it only hurts if you're doing it wrong. And that goes with anything. If you're in a relationship, if you're working on a car, if you're lifting weights, if you're working whatever job you're working, it only hurts if you're doing it wrong. So if your life is nothing but suffering, you're doing something wrong. Probably walking someone else's path because that's what you were trained to do. So that's what you trained your life to be. That's what you trained your path to be like. Well, my path has to be like their path. Why? You're not them. Granted, we're all going to meet at the same tree at the end. All these different paths end in the same location. And if you want to walk together with someone, that's different. You are still an individual and within that space within that relationship you need to maintain your individuality you need to maintain your separate path well I I like crocheting I like video games but you have to walk my path oh I have to crochet now no you don't play video games you go crochet it's called me time <laughs> And people don't get it. And people don't get it. And some people are just scared to walk their own path. And that's not, and, and this is, I'm, at this point I'm going to work with the positive assumption. Well, it's still a negative assumption, but it's a more positive reflection of an assumption. Let's put it that way. Some people don't walk their path because they assume Everyone in their life will be unhappy about it. They don't even tell anyone ever about the path they want to walk. Oh, I want to be a musician. Oh, I have a really good singing voice. But no one ever hears you because you only sing when you're by yourself. And the one time somebody hears you, you never sing again. Not because you have a crappy voice. But because you're afraid of what everybody else will think if you just if you tell them I've decided I want to be a musician. 
Same thing, uh, look at the gay community. How many people didn't come out of the closet and even married the opposite sex against their own path just, to, just because they were afraid of what everybody else would think. They didn't even give them the chance to say, hey, you're on the wrong path. They just assumed that's what would happen. And in this scenario, that's not what would have happened. Everyone would have been completely and 100% accepting of your path. But you didn't tell him you wanted to be a vocalist, so you didn't give him the chance to say yay or nay. You didn't tell him that you wanted to be a mechanic. You didn't tell him you wanted to be a scientist. You didn't tell him that you prefer men over women or women over men or both. Walking somebody else's path is painful. A lot of people walk the path they think they're supposed to walk because somebody else puts them on it. Oh, you got to be a mechanic like your dad. Oh, you got to be a carpenter like your dad. Oh, we got three generations of police officers. You got to be a cop. But I'm really good with math. <laughs> Can't I be a scientist? Nope. <laughs> you got to play football like your dad. Your dad was a high school football champ. You got to do the same thing. But I'm really good at chess. Can't I do that? Nope. <laughs> Everybody has that done to them to some extent at some point in their life by somebody. And it only matters if somebody important starts that chain of events. Because somebody you don't know his opinion of it doesn't really matter unless it's reinforcing the opinion of someone you hold as important. It's like your mom or your dad, an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent. If they bash your dream, then instead of this just being random criticism from this stranger, suddenly it's reinforcement to a negative idea that you got from somebody else. And I'm here to tell you, if you're on the wrong path, you're going to be miserable and you need to fix it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're doing. If you enjoy what you're doing and you get still get that feeling you're doing it wrong, then you're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean you have to completely abandon that, but get on your path. Get on your track. And if getting on your path or track means you do need to completely abandon that, so be it. I am... Um, I can say with all honesty, not completely on my path, but I'm working toward getting back on it because I can feel a little bit of emptiness that that part of me is not there anymore, and I would really super de duper de like it back. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we're getting on past the thirty minute mark. Very good episode. Got a little passionate there. Talked a little louder than I planned on because I have to control my uh, my own volume because there's no way to control this mic. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah. Good show. Good show. So, if you've enjoyed this video as much as I have, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Uh, go ahead and leave comments down below uh, or video response and if you would like to keep getting this information it'll keep changing or be different every episode or maybe you just like the sound of my voice you can hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs>